A few weeks ago, I made a video about the water levels in Lake Mead and tried to include as much info as possible about the background, what the water levels mean, and specific examples of how that will directly affect people. And many thanks to everyone who watched that and left comments. It was my most viewed video so far, and it really helped get this channel started. So again, thank you very much to everyone. This is a follow-up to clarify a few things that I got wrong or I wasn't as clear as I should have been. I'm also going to give some new updates on the water levels. And finally, we're going to answer many of the questions and comments that were left on that first video about Lake Mead. So if you want to watch that first, you can find that link of the top of the video right about now. However, it is not necessary. So where is Lake Mead right now? According to the official Bureau of Reclamation, the water level is 1,040.72 feet above sea level. My first video was on July 2nd, so in 21 days it has fallen 2 feet 3 inches in 3 weeks. However, by checking this chart, the official numbers, the water level didn't change yesterday, and it only went down 4 one hundredths of an inch the day before. Now, I referenced Sin City Outdoors. They were the guys that originally made me aware of this crisis. They film on location videos every few days, and they are showing that the water levels are dropping much faster than the official government numbers. In my opinion, if you want real updates on the water levels, check out Sin City Outdoors. Much respect to those guys. So let's talk about Deadpool. It's coming at 950 feet for Lake Mead. That's when the dam can no longer produce electricity, and that's only 90 feet away. Some of the comments were extrapolating that daily reduction of 0.3 inches or whatever the daily rate was, and that it would take years or more to get to Deadpool level. Well, yes and no. If the rate was constant and the walls of the Colorado River Canyon were perfectly vertical, that may be true. However, the bottom of Lake Mead is basically V-shaped, and as it gets more shallow, it gets more narrow, and as evaporation or drainage increases, the water level is reduced exponentially. For example, go to your kitchen and take out a large mixing bowl. It's probably only 4 inches diameter at the bottom, 10 inches diameter near the trip near the top now add one cup of water it will probably cover the bottom of the bowl by about one inch then add another cup of water then add another each additional cup of water causes the water level to increase by ever smaller amounts because the bowl is getting wider towards the top the river is exactly the opposite Every time you remove the same amount of water, the level goes down faster. So when you reach that dead pool level, I stated that the Colorado River would stop flowing downstream. I was absolutely wrong about that. There is a flow valve or a gate they can open and it will release water downstream, but it bypasses all of the turbines and it will not create any energy. However, that creates a whole new set of problems by further reducing the lake water levels and you don't even get any electricity. And I also said that Lake Powell was worse. And it was. But they recently diverted a few million acre feet of water from Flaming Gorge. It's a little like stealing from Paul to pay Peter. There's not enough water to go around and they're just shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic. Currently, Lake Powell is only 16 feet above the record low water level. And that record was set in April of this year. So they released a bunch of water and only got the lake to go up a few feet. According to reclamation forecasts, Powell's inflows this year are expected to be about two thirds of normal. Right now, Lake Powell is 3,537 feet above sea level and it's at 25% of capacity. It stops making electricity at 3490, that's 47 more feet, and it is dead pool at 3370, if it drops 167 more feet. But 
they just released some new numbers that show it is actually 6.75% less water in the reservoir than they thought. Apparently, the bottom is covered in more silt than they previously assumed. So when the water level gets low, it's just mud and muck and not really usable water. Let's talk about those boat launches. Yes, there is still one and only one boat launch, and it is reduced to two lanes with boat type restrictions. Only shallow hull boats and nothing larger than 24 feet. I boldly predicted that the boat ramps would be closed shortly after 4th of July. Wrong. One is still open, but it is getting expensive to keep extending it, and I'm not sure they're going to keep extending it every few weeks as the water recedes. I was probably a little early on that one, but I still think they're going to close it pretty soon. In my earlier video, I stated that many boats would be abandoned or lost as the water level decreases and they just can't get the boats out. Well, I got a lot of spicy comments on how that was the dumbest thing they had ever heard. You can just tow them out or use a crane, they said. A few people even said you can use a helicopter. Okay, sure, it is always possible to do these things, but for all practical purposes, it is basically impossible. And here's why. When the water levels recede, it looks dry on top, but right under that crust is a clay silt muck, and it kind of acts like glue. It is extremely difficult to get a tow truck or crane to your stuck boat. Sure, in six months when it's good and dry, it might be a lot easier. I'm guessing it'll still be expensive. Expensive? How about that helicopter idea? Helicopters can't lift giant yachts. So that will be limited to smaller boats. I'm not sure anyone is going to spend $20,000 to save their $10,000 boat. But hey, I could be wrong. I would just buy two new boats and call it a day, but uh, who knows. If you want a great visual representation of what that partially dried riverbed does to a four-wheel drive truck, check out Matt's Off-Road Recovery. They rescue a guy stuck in that sludge. The ground looks dry, and you can kind of walk on it. But once you break through that crust, you might as well be on ice because you are stuck. I'll put a link to that below. So I want to go back and talk about the crops that are using so much of this precious water in the desert through a drought. I mentioned cotton crops in Arizona, and they definitely use a lot of water without much of a return. But so many people commented that alfalfa and the Saudi Arabia connection so off I went to do a little research and, well, you guys are very well informed. Apparently, someone made a deal with some rich Saudi Arabian investors quite a while ago, and they somehow got water rights that are pretty impressive. Anyway, they're growing a bunch of alfalfa on our land with our water, and they're sending the crops back home to feed their livestock. The residents of Arizona are kind of getting screwed, and it is a fascinating story. There will also be a link to that below. I also mentioned the almond groves in California. So many people said that almonds aren't as bad as I said, and they don't need that much water. Well, they were partially right. Almonds are not the thirstiest nut in California. Walnuts and pistachios actually require more water than almonds. But there are way more almond groves. So yes, almonds do use an astronomical amount of water. It takes about one gallon of water to grow a single almond. So this works great in California's temperate climate and when they have El Nino rainy seasons, but not so well during a drought that has lasted this long. At some point, it just doesn't make sense. It makes dollars. It makes a ton of money for the almond growers. But at what cost? I said that Napa Valley was also going to suffer from this drought, and I can understand how some people might have assumed that Lake Mead provided water to Napa Valley. It does not. Napa Valley gets 0% of their water from the Colorado River. They get their water primarily from Lake Hennessy. About 95% of Napa Valley comes from Lake Hennessy, with some other smaller bodies of water contributing. However, I wasn't wrong. They are going to suffer from this, the same way, but from a different source. Lake Hennessy 
Lake Hennessy water level is currently at 306.7 feet. The spillway, full pool, is 315 feet. This sounds like it's really close to being full, relatively speaking, but this is a small lake and it's not very deep. The lake bottom is 265.3 feet above sea level. So it drops another 41 feet and that lake is empty. Although I fear that it will be unusable much sooner than that. That part of California is currently rated at severe drought. So you do the math. Okay, Hoover Dam power distribution. You wouldn't believe the number of people who were 100% certain that Las Vegas doesn't use any electricity from the Hoover Dam. Well, they do. They use electricity from the Hoover Dam. However, I could have been a little more clear on how that power is distributed. So just to back up for a second, Hoover Dam has 17 turbines. However, because the water is so low, they can only use five at the current level. So production is down significantly. Also, I mentioned that when water levels get low, it could let air into the turbines, and that is a bad scenario. A few days ago, there was an explosion and a fire at the dam, and I thought that might be the case, but it was just a transformer fire, and they put it out quickly. But I can only assume that when a major piece of equipment explodes, that would also reduce the energy they can produce or distribute. But the official port is, everything's good, so who knows. But in any case, of the power that is produced, about 50% of the power produced at Hoover Dam still goes to California. Nevada gets about 22%, Arizona gets 20%. Just to be clear, Hoover Dam does not produce 50% of all of the energy used by California. Only that 50% of Hoover's energy is sent to California. I cannot find accurate numbers of how much electricity Cali uses, so I don't know the percentage that it will affect Cali if or when the dam stops producing electricity. Same goes for Nevada and Arizona. I'm sure that if the Hoover Dam stops producing power, it will be bad for Las Vegas and the rest of Nevada, but I just don't know how bad. I'm sure it won't be fun and they can get power from other places, but it will almost certainly cost more. So I hope that clears up a few things. Now that you're all caught up with the current water levels and what is the plan for moving forward? Well, the Bureau of Reclamation has issued a stern warning to the states that use water from the Colorado River. Reduce your usage now or we will do it for you. So large amounts of water are measured in acre feet. One acre foot is 326,000 gallons. But to make that a little easier to understand, if you take a football field and you cover it with one foot of water, that's about one acre foot of water. Right now, the Colorado River and those two main reservoirs, Mead and Powell, supply water to about 40 million people. And they are planning on reducing access by two to four million acre feet for the seven states that rely on it. California is entitled to 4.4 million acre feet and Arizona is entitled to 2.4 to 2.8 million acre feet, depending on which source you use. As it stands right now, they are asking for states to reduce their water consumption. But if asking doesn't work, they will physically reduce the water that they receive. I'm not sure of the actual method they will use, but I can guess they will do something like simply turn off the pumps. It might be as easy as that. Earlier this month, California water regulators ordered farmers, agriculture irrigation districts, and cities to stop diverting water from the San Joaquin River, a significant move for a river system that goes through the heart of California's agricultural region. Agriculture makes up 80% of the water used in the Southwest. Now you can argue that crops don't use that much water and most of it is for drinking or swimming pools or whatever. But according to Pew Trusts, those are the numbers. Links below. There will be a lot of links because this is a heavily researched project and I am bringing all receipts. So water shortages are coming from every direction. Most people are talking about Lake Mead, most frequently. 
but I'm showing the bigger picture of this drought. It is affecting or going to affect huge regions of the Southwest. This is part of the reason I was talking about Napa Valley, even though it is not directly affected by the Colorado River. So comments. I got a bunch of very interesting comments from the first vid, and I want to answer some of those questions. So they can be grouped into a few categories. One, who caused this? Of course, this is the internet, so you're always going to get, it was Trump's fault. And then of course you also get, it's Biden's fault. Wrong. On both counts. You could actually blame Obama, Bush, either one. Or even Herbert Hoover for starting the damn project in the first place. <laughs> damn project. To the best of my knowledge, a president can't control the weather or droughts. So this brings me to another group of comments. Conspiracy theories. I love a good conspiracy theory. But some of the comments were extra special. It ranged from harp weather control to aliens, Chinese weather experiments, planned droughts to depopulate the earth, etc., etc., etc. Conspiracy theories might eventually be proved true, but at this time, I cannot find any solid evidence that any of them are causing this catastrophe. Another group of comments were asking for prayers and some type of higher power salvation. If you believe in prayers to solve problems, I hope that gives you comfort. But I beg you to also take some personal action instead of waiting for salvation that may never come, or it may come too late. Four, many comments were basically, if you just do this thing, the problem is solved. Those posts were usually based around desalination plants, nuclear power, solar panels, taking water from the Mississippi River, etc. In an oversimplified summary, desalination plants will help but then you end up with a large amount of salt or brine that can't be returned to the ocean because it causes dead zones. We still need to refine that technology. Nuclear is the greenest option so far. Solar also has its problems. I did a video about solar panels, short lifespan, hard to recycle, and toxic chemicals that leach into groundwater when they're dumped in landfills. And taking water from other places is how Cali got this whole problem started by taking water from a river hundreds of miles away to grow crops in a desert? Let's not make that mistake again. However, the overwhelming percentage of the 1,400 comments so far were appreciative about the information I had provided, and it helped them understand the gravity and scope of the situation. Since I made that video, this channel was extremely new. I had 85 subscribers and a crappy microphone. This single video allowed me to grow and get much better. I truly thank every single person who made a comment and helped me get better. Now, I can go back to work and find another story that is getting underreported by mainstream media and bring more interesting stories to all of you. Again, many, many thanks.